Hi, I'm Ben Shelley, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at a still single frame render of the base of a phone, and we're going to um, render off a depth pass of that and bring it into After Effects and set it up so that we're able to uh, use that information to um, choose where we would like to focus on the phone. This would also work in um, Photoshop, but we'll particularly looking in After Effects on this. So we can set up a blur focal distance that can slide up and down the phone like this from a single high quality render. So we're gonna jump uh, back into Maya and hopefully in the previous tutorial, um, you've, already, or you've already set up the view that you'd like to get and you've set up a bookmark for that view as well uh, to make sure that you stay there no matter where you accidentally nudge the camera later on. Um, we need to select everything and we're going to assign it to a new render layer. So if we go to edit, select all, and then um, if you go to your channel box uh, or layer editor over here, or click on it if it's already there, and um, you're probably used to working the display tab already, we're going to jump over to the render tab here. So at the moment we have a master layer. This is the layer where everything, when we hit render, everything goes through there at the moment. We want to create a new one, and so we're going to with everything selected, click on create a new layer and assign the selected objects. And we're going to rename that, double click on it and rename it to depth like this. After you've done that, we need to right click and go to attributes. And we're going to assign a preset to this render layer. Um, it's got loads of really good presets, including your occlusion passes and stuff. But we're going to set this up as a luminance depth like this. Okay. And everything's either going to turn white or it's all going to turn black. Um, for me, it's obviously all turned white like this. And at the moment, um, none of the uh, preferences are set up properly. So if we go to the out color here, we can see that this really is where we need to start playing around with some of these values. The first and most important thing to do is to break these values here. So leave the top one. Um, so obviously we can set, see here that these values have an input. We can see instead of a checkerboard, we've got the input icon appearing and they're also highlighted uh, beige. Leave the top one, but old min and old max, right click on them and go to break connection. Again, right click on old max and break connection. And now we can type in some values into here, which should have an effect on our image. But what values do we type in? It's going to be different for everyone's scene. Um, the easiest way of doing this, um, if you have a high poly scene or a scene with lots of objects in it, this might be a good idea. So I've got a scene here that's uh, really quite dense. Um, okay, and uh, let's say I'd like to set up a, uh, a depth pass uh, in this as well. And um, once you've assigned something to your uh, depth layer, yeah, right click, go to attributes and uh, click on the little input here straight away and then click on the input there for so this is taking through the texture that's applied to absolutely everything click on the input for that and now we're here I want the, the minimum needs to be something that's close to the camera in other words minimum these this is going to be what's pure white so if I go uh, just select this object here there's, there's a small light on the wall over here um, I want to find out how far that is away from the camera so I can go to display, uh, heads up display, and I can choose object details. And then on the right hand side over here, you'll see there's a distance from camera section. So that light is 52 units away from the camera. Okay, these skyscrapers in the distance are uh, like 5,500 away. So obviously if I was to type in, um, and it, this railing here is 23 units away. So let's say I want this railing to be pure white. I'll go to the input here in an old min. Um, I would type in 23. Okay, and now you can see the railing already um, has gone, um, part of it's gone pure white like that. Now these buildings in the distance, um, again, it's 21, uh, sorry, 2100. Um, so I can go into the, back into here and type in old max. I'm going to type in 2100, hit enter, and you'll see that there'll be a gradient going from um, what's in the foreground to what's in the background. Unfortunately, with this scene, because the things in the background are so far away, uh, that 
it, it doesn't really work. So if I move the camera up, you can probably see that a single skyscraper, um, this would be suitable for that. But for this scene, it, it's really not appropriate. So if I go back to my bookmark view, I can see I need to type in a different value. Typing in the thing furthest away isn't gonna work. And it's quite rare, um, unless you're doing tilt shift photography, that you're gonna be able to make things in the background um, that blurry, that far away. The, de the focal distance will most likely be much, much closer together on your camera. So if I want to something slightly more realistic, I could choose something like this sign over here, which I can not actually see it if I just hit F5. So click on that sign over there, that's uh, 117 units away. So now if I go to the input here, old max type in 117, we can see that by the time uh, it gets to that screen there, everything after that screen or that sign is pure black and everything closer than the railing is pure white. Uh, and in After Effects, it will sort of choose a, a a particular gradient color, like maybe it's this 50% gray, we want that area in focus with these uh, destroyed bits of floor, the front of the train here. So 50% gray in After Effects would choose that to be in focus. So this could work quite well. Um, we may want to get even closer, so if I just focus on that sign, let's say I just want to sort of really focus on that. Anything in front of it I want to be blurry, and anything behind it I also want to be blurry. So um, for that I would click on this sign, that's 9.5 and this one, the next light further down is 44. So I can go into here and type in 9 and 44, meaning that um, this sign's now going to stand out really clearly from everything um, beyond that. So it's just playing around with these values really, seeing what will work for in your scene. But just imagine in your head that anything uh, that's black would say be out of focus and all of this would be in focus or, or vice versa. But that's what we're looking for. But that's the uh, object display. So that's uh, display, heads up display, object details, and that can tell you how far objects are away from the camera. Unfortunately, in our phone scene, uh, it's, it's pretty much made out of a whole object. So there's another trick that we can use for this. And that's to bring up the camera um, attributes uh, here. And we can play around with the clipping planes. And so if we want to be really lazy, this is what I'd do. I would get the far clip plane and, I don't know, bring it down to like 10. Um, oh, that, that was a good guess. So if you bring it down to like 6, that's probably going to start clipping through the phone. You may notice this if you create a large scene and zoom out really far. You might notice that it starts to disappear. Likewise, if you get really close to geometry sometimes with your camera, you'll notice that it starts to actually clip through the camera as well like this so um, I can zoom in and out here and you'll start to sort of see through stuff if that ever gets annoying you can always reduce the near clip plane so I've got mine set to uh, 0.1 by default um, if I go back to my bookmark for you here just to make sure we're back yeah that's fine okay so the far clip plane if I type in 6 let's say 5.5 .5, yep I can oh let's time 4.5 I notice that the back of the phone's getting cut off there. So if I hit five in there and the near clip plane, let's say I want it to be pure white everywhere beyond here, I can just start to type in some numbers. So we've got one, nothing appearing yet, two. Yeah, two is looking pretty good. So I'm looking for a gradient to go from pure white from this point here to pure black from that point onwards. So I can see the values here are two and five. I'm gonna set these back um, to where it should be, so 0.1 and like 10 billion or something like that. Okay, so now we can go into the uh, surface shader here, go into the inputs, and in old min, we can type in 2, and in old max, we can type in 5. And if you deselect and just, let's just turn everything off for a minute and um, see what uh, we're going to do. So. If you make sure that you've got six hit on the keyboard, um, if, if, if five is selected, you're not going to see anything. You need to make sure you're on textured uh, view by hitting six on the keyboard. Um, you should see this. So we can see the back, the bottoms of the holes are going to start to be um, you know, out of focus. This part of the phone will be out of focus as well. And we can refine these values if we really want as well. So let's say 4.5 might be a good um, 4.8. Yeah, that'd be a really quite nice. So 
those are the values that work for me. It'll be different for you and depending on the scale of your work. But that's how you find out what numbers to put in there. It's reduce the clipping plane is a really good one. Okay, so you've got your depth path set up. Um, then if you're happy with this view, um, make sure that you go back to your master layer. And to do that, let's say we want to render off our master layer on its own before we do this. Make sure you uncheck the green check mark on that by clicking on it. And go back to master layer and put a green check mark on that. And then you can go ahead and uh, render that view. Just double check in your render settings as well that the render layer is master layer and you're going to render using mental rain. Use the same settings that we had um, previously set up for the um, top view of the phone. And the render should look something uh, like this. So once you've got that done, we need, now need to render off the depth pass. So if we now click on depth, make sure that we put a green check mark on that. Uncheck the uh, green check mark from uh, master layer and go to your render settings and we should be using the uh, depth like this um, again we can render using mental ray uh, the quality for this we can just drag down to 0 0.25 that'll be absolutely fine and go ahead and render um, render that off and that, sh that took me uh, four seconds to uh, to do that so a really quick it might even take even quicker than that Make sure you go and save these renders off. So um, get your your nice um, uh, beauty shot like that and save that one off as a TIFF file. Same with this one, file, save image, and save that as a um, phone base depth um, on that one. Okay, so you should have in your uh, images file in Maya now some of these images saved out, okay? Um, now would be a good time to drag them into an After Effects source project file, or we can just use them straight from here if you're really lazy. So as long as by this stage you have a, a phone base like this and the depth pass, that's fine. You'll notice probably um, that it's uh, really stretched or squished in like this. This is just uh, what Maya does for the fun of it. Uh, Photoshop and After Effects know how to look at these um, in ways that Windows uh, Picture Viewer doesn't. So don't worry about that. As soon as you jump into um, After Effects, so drag in your uh, phone base and your phone base depth, both into the project source area on the left there. And then drag in phone base on its own. Just drag it into the big open area in the middle here. And what we'll do, we'll create a composition that's the exact right size, so HD 720, because that's what we've made the image as. Um, and it's also happened to have given me uh, a duration of four seconds. I'd like this, to, um, this is gonna be a really quick animation. It's probably not gonna last more than a second, but just to be safe, we can make it two seconds. So just go to composition, composition settings, and in duration, just type in, make sure it's just uh, two seconds long. So 0204 like that, whatever, that'd be fine. Okay. Uh, now we also need to drag in the, um, the depth pass. Um, if you drag it into your, layers view like this it should put it exactly over the top of the other one and you can see it's got a duration of the whole length of the after effects uh, file there so to tell after effect what we're going to do now is tell after effects to use this information to blur this in a certain way so what we're going to do is turn off the phone pass layer it has to be in there as a layer but just turn it off poke it in the eye like this now click in your phone base TIFF, so this is the beauty shot, make sure this layer is selected and then go to composition, sorry, then go to effect, blur and sharpen, camera lens blur. And you'll see the whole image uh, is blurred straight away, don't get too excited yet, you need to do one more thing, go to blur map, layer and choose the phone base depth pass layer which is currently turned off but you can still choose it and it will now use that as your blur map. If you ever lose this over here, it should be right next to project uh, like that. So this is where it's at. Um, and now you can start to play around. If you choose the blur focal distance, you'll notice that a different part of your phone should be in focus uh, wherever your slide is to. For a slightly more of a bigger impact, 
I would recommend dragging blur radius up to around 12 or something like that. As you do this, if you do it too much, you'll notice at the edges, uh, you start to um, lose, um, you start to be able to see through and see the background. To stop this from happening, check the box that says repeat edge pixels. And now you can drag the, uh, so let's say blur radius, it's something really big. So we've got a huge bokeh here, it's uh, 31 um, for the blur radius. And now the blur focal distance, you should be able to drag up and down like this. The bigger the blur, the, the longer it will take to do. Um, but when you're this close to something, it's most likely that the blur radius is going to be really big. Um, if this was, let's say, a, a five-story building, it, the five-story building would look like a miniature if uh, you had this sort of uh, focal length on it. So just um, do what you think works. Uh, maybe even get a nice camera and have a go at taking pictures of something of a similar scale, just so you can see what you're doing. But this is what we're looking for. Um, drag the blur radius down just a bit so uh, we don't all get a headache. And then um, we're going to animate this now. So make sure your time slide is at frame zero. And make sure you're happy with the blur radius. I want my focal length to go from the back of the phone to the front and then sort of wobble around there a bit. So uh, um, the best thing to do is to drag down, um, or to drop down here. You'll notice that an effect section has been added because you've added this camera lens blur. If you just uh, click down on that and go to a blur map, uh, we, could, we could do it up here as well, I suppose, but the same things, the same settings are editable down here. Uh, blur focal distance at the moment is zero. And we're going to leave it at zero, but we're going to click on the um, stopwatch next to it. And this will activate keyframing for that attribute. And then we're going to drag the time slider to one second in and move the blur focal distance um, as close uh, to the camera as we can get. So we want uh, everything here to be in focus. So if you drag it too much, it's, just, it's going to have a sort of bad, bad effect and it move too quickly. So just move it very slowly until the front of your phone starts to be in focus like this. That works uh, perfectly fine. Okay, so 255 works for me. And now you can drag your time slider and you should see the focal length moving up the phone like that. Um, at the end, usually when you um, use the focusing ring on a DSLR camera, you never get it quite right to start with. You get the beginning bit fine, but at the end you're going to wobble around a bit. We want to replicate that as well. So just after, maybe 10 frames after um, one second, we're going to drag the blur focal length down a bit, maybe to that, almost to that screw, okay? And then we're going to move it back to the end again. We could drag this back up to the 250, or we can copy that keyframe and paste it there. So now, if you hit the play button over here, it's going to buffer this into your computer memory. So depending on how much memory you've got, the more it will be able to do. Um, so just give it one second to buffer that in. And now it should play through it quite quickly. And I'm going to set, make sure you've got it set up to loop over here as well. And so you can sort of see it going from the back to the front, wobbling around a bit and finally settling on the um, headphone jack. And that's what we're after. That's all we want. So this would make up a really, if we're doing a phone promotional video or, or something, um, or for something for an audio app, this would work really well as just a, a one second clip of that. Now let's say that you're happy with this. Um, you can then just go ahead and either render that off, or um, we're going to. I would obviously save this to put into another, a different After Effects composition. But that is how to set up a set up a depth pass and um, set it up in After Effects as well.